Yes, sir. Sure. What made you put the John Henry segment into New Frontier? What was kind of your idea behind that? That's a great question. Um, I wanted New Frontier to accurately reflect the time in, in which it, it takes place. And in order to do that, I had to, I had to definitely take a look at the civil rights situation in America at that time. It's probably one of the two or three most important uh, aspects of, of you know, our society in terms of what was going on right then. And when you begin to look at DC's history, it's hard to find a black character in that era of their publishing. And you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm talking out of turn here to say that in the 50s, DC was a white publishing house, basically. And uh, that made it really difficult to find a character that could carry that side of the story for him. He did have some green characters. Yes, <laughs> several. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, I couldn't find anything that really worked for me, and the only thing that kept coming back to my head was uh, Steel. It was really the only viable character I saw they had that, that, that fit into the kind of thing I wanted to do, but Steel didn't exist back then. But Steel's based on, you know, American folklore, the story of John Henry. So I went right back to the folk poems, and when I, when I, I read them, I realized, what if there was a guy in between John Henry and Steele? A guy who picked this up first. And maybe Irons was aware of it when he was young. And that's what motivates him later in life. And that gave me a place to start. And after that, it was, I, I've commented on this before, it was remarkable how quickly it came into play, in place for me because it was like, okay, it's a civil rights issue, so he's a hero. Who are the villains? Well, that ain't hard to figure out. They wear white hats. Who points on them? And then the, it, it literally happened within a minute. The minute I thought KKK, I thought, because I, I didn't consider what this guy would look like, I thought he wears a black hat. And then I was like, holy shit, yeah. They try to hang him, but he lives and the news, and then that's it. it. It all came together like in a minute, seriously, and then with the hammers, the whole thing kind of fell into place. And I kind of knew it's, it's a sad story, but I couldn't let him win because the, wor the world wasn't there yet. And that's why at the end of, of his story, it's a little girl that rats him out because I want it to be clear that we're still a generation away from this problem being solved. It's not, it wasn't an adult that rats him out, it's a child. So even, even a child, even a baby has had this kind of thinking programmed into them and we're still at a point where we've got a ways to go before it's gonna clear itself up. But it was certainly probably the most personal part of the book for me to construct. And, and probably the part of it that I'm proudest of in the end. And, and I don't know how to say this the right way, so I'll just say it. I'm white. And it's really difficult for me to even begin to think I understand the subject matter I'm dealing with there. So you have to go into it with a lot of empathy, but also the understanding that you really don't, you don't, can't begin to understand what it is you're writing about. So it was a very difficult thing for me to do, a real challenge. And uh, I think from, you know, the friends of mine who came to it, I, th I think I did okay. And it's like, that's probably the thing I'm proud of stuff. But, so thanks for asking. Okay. Listen to your woman, but not closely.